I have a beef with a common opinion among many churches and, and among many Christians as well. But first, let me tell you the story that prompted me to talk about it. We have um, friends, a young couple, that uh, attend a smallish conservative Baptist church, I think it is, conservative, conservative in the sense that they would say that they hold to sound doctrine and practice biblical Christianity, which has many definitions, I know, but I digress. But this church invited one of their missionaries that they support to come and give an update about the work that he was doing. And at the end of the presentation, he made an announcement and the announcement was, we're going to have a baby. And my friend said that you could hear a pin drop. Now this would be their sixth baby. I think she said that six, yeah, sixth. She said their faces were horrified. So now we could unpack this maybe from their angle. Here's a couple in the ministry of the Great Commission and they depend on the financial support of others to take care of their needs. Now I have no idea of their actual financial situation or if they had other employment, I don't know. But for the sake of the story, let's just assume that they didn't. How dare they have more of their own children to have to pay and care for on someone else's dime, right? Maybe that's what everyone was thinking, or it may have just been more of a typical aversion to the more than average size of a family. I don't know. But here is my beef with it. If the Great Commission is important, and it is, and if it's the main command Jesus gave to us before he left, and it was, and our work here, according to scripture, is to be about the business of bringing others to Christ, being eternally minded and ministering to our neighbors in the name of Jesus, and it should, and why on earth does one's own children not fit into that? Because I think it does. The church can be psychotic when it doesn't recognize the value of Christians having children, but then complains about the evil in the world. My friend, who is a young mother of three, went on to tell me that she had not received any kind of emotional or physical support from the women in this particular church, um, the one they just left, by the way. But do you know where change begins? It begins with us, with ourselves, our homes, our children, and our churches. When God's people multiply, there isn't a Christian alive who shouldn't rejoice in that. And the financial argument is a weak straw man. Because if that is our greatest concern with other people having children to be raised to love the Lord, and by the way, to remind you, Jesus was never really concerned about material things. If that's your concern, then put your money where your mouth is and help them out financially. We could change the landscape of society if we just understood this one thing. If every church got this and encouraged their couples when they had children and they helped them out and stood with them, the godly seed that God so desires of his people would begin to be scattered and the Lord would build his church and the gates of hell could not prevail against it. Now, of course, he will build his church through whatever means necessary, but our obedience and willingness to view the gift of children the way he does will advance that work. Now, of course, this idea is predicated on the assumption that Christian families truly understand the grave responsibility to immerse their children in the word of God, to live humbly and faithfully before them, to show them what it is to live a life given to Christ so that they will hopefully and prayerfully grow up to carry on the great commission to whatever part of the world they go into. One problem seems to be built on another though. Once we lose our sight about the mission, children, we fail to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And then we do get caught up in a worldly cycle of seeing our children merely as commodities and liabilities. And who wants more of those, right? We need to wake up church. The heritage God has so richly offered us in our children is beyond measure. His plan has always been that we would, like warriors, fill the world and send them out 
to continue to live the good news of Jesus Christ and offer hope to a broken and suffering world. Children are our greatest assets for this. We should encourage them, support them, pray for them, and rejoice when they come. For of such is the very kingdom of heaven. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I want to invite you to come over to my blog at generationofcedar.com. I have been writing there for 17 years and you'll just find a treasure trove of encouragement, inspiration. I talk about all things Christian motherhood, um, parenting in general, and homeschooling and so much more. I know you will be inspired and encouraged. And I would just love to connect with you too. Um, If you subscribe, we start a conversation and you'll receive a weekly question and answer and also a link to every other week's podcast. So hop over there, subscribe, and let's chat. Hope to hear from you soon.